Everybody. We're going to talk about the Maven S2. This is their compact spotter. It is 11 inches long and it is really unique and clever. So I've been playing around with it, having a lot of fun, and I just wanted to highlight a few things first, the specs. So again, 11 inches long, it's 34.4 ounces on the weight, and the eye relief I think is 18.6 or so to about 20. So really, really good eye relief on this, this spotting scope. As you can see, it's extremely compact. I mean, you can almost like put this in a pocket and it has a zoom range of 12 to 27 and the objective is 56 millimeters. So you've got 12 to 27 by 56. Now, before you guys run and say that is not enough magnification, hang tight. I wanna to talk to you about who this might be for. This is a very purpose-driven spotting scope. And so I really think that Maven, when they, I look at their spotting scope offerings, I think they've done a good job of hitting different uh, points. So let's start with the S1. That is their 25 to 50. That is their full size spotter. It's big, it's heavy. You've got a straight or angled option. I've never looked through one, but it has the fluorite glass. Supposedly those are just really nice spotters, amazing quality. So if you want a full size spotter and you're happy with those specs, I think that's a good way to go for sure. The S2, they designed for the backcountry hunter, maybe the minimalist who wants something compact. And I think they hit it out of the park with this design because really this doesn't take up much, much room, much weight. And for example, if you're traveling a lot or you're doing backpack hunting, or if you're a deer hunter and you just like to keep a smaller pack, this is a really neat option. It also has a minimum down to 12. And so instead of 25, that's a pretty high minimum, especially when you're looking, let's say you like to look at game at, at a feeder at hundred yards. Maybe that's your style. At a 25 magnification, it kind of gets you really high up in there. Whereas a 12, it gives you a very wide field of view. So I'm gonna add the, the field of view specs here, but I was very impressed with looking through it. I felt like it was a very wide field of view. And so I really like that, that low end magnification. With spotters, a lot of people look at, at the high end, which is fair, but having a, a nice low end, it just really opens up that field of view. And it, it, it's just amazing to look from a wide field of view, find game, and then you can zoom in with this. So the 27, it's not a huge max magnification. And so I think that is the reason that Maven also has a CS1. So that is not a fluorite, uh, spotting scope. It is, I think it's either Chinese or, or, or made in the Philippines, but it is a 15 to 45 by 65. It's also very lightweight. I've looked through one and I liked it. However, once you've looked through like fluorite glass or Japanese glass, you do notice a difference. It, it, it's definitely, it's got good glass, good coatings, but I do, I do prefer this glass for sure from, from their spotting scopes. Also, the eye relief on the CS1, to me, we used it last year on our elk hunt, was pretty kind of tough to manage. I think it's about 16 and a half, especially when you get in those higher magnifications. It, it definitely loses that eye relief. I had to get my eye right up on it, and I didn't really, didn't really enjoy looking through it uh, personally. And so, like, that's the same as the CS1, the Athlon Aries. It's just maybe kind of look through the eye relief first. If that works for you, great. It's a good spotting scope and a good option. So that's kind of where this one sits. It is, again, this, this is their, their compact. A few of the standout features that I want to definitely highlight are, first of all, it has an abiconic prism, which is pretty unique for a spotting scope that does allow better light transmission. It also has their fluorite glass, same as their S1. And so, I really like that Maven put a lot of effort into this with their glass, their prism, and then they decided let's, let's get the best glass and prism we can and put it in the smallest package we can. So I'm, I'm approaching it from that angle and then it happens to be a 12 to 27. And so it, it's, it's a unique design. The, the magnification range is not huge. I don't think you're gonna replace a full-size spotter with this scope. 
but I do think that Maven hit it out of the park with an ultralight spotting scope. When I think about like competitors, the Kawas, the 553, 554, I'd love to try one someday. Those have the fluorite glass, but those are, those are getting way up there in price. Those are lighter, bigger magnification range, but look at numbers like field of view, eye relief. You gotta compare all of those to, to really see where is the, the value. Maven, every time I've talked to them, super helpful, super nice. They have an amazing warranty. You really feel like with Maven that you're gonna be back no matter what. And so if you're hard on your gear, think about that too. Maven definitely stands behind their products. They build very solid products. And so they're direct to consumer. So they're not out you know, sponsoring a lot of people or, or getting uh, maybe brand ambassadors as far as I know. They're, they're direct to consumer, a lot of word of mouth. I've seen Facebook ads. And so I, I like their style. They definitely have grown a lot from what I've seen over the years. I think they're building a new headquarters. But definitely check out Maven Optics. If you're looking for an ultra compact spotter, do not let the 12 to 27 scare you away just yet. If you desire more, if you're hunting primarily deer or, or one to two miles away, sure, take a look at a little bit higher magnification. But if you maybe hunt primarily elk and you're not hunting crazy far distances, this is a really neat spotter. So we're gonna look through it through the phone. This is just through my iPhone. And so you're not gonna get the full image, but I'm gonna show you some examples, some zoom ranges, what it looks like. Okay, so here's the first thing we're gonna range. It's a windmill that is actually stopped. And so I'm ranging it right now. So it's 455 yards away. Now that is on 12 power. So you can see a lot of detail definitely a great image on 12 power the 12 power is is really really nice for those those wide field of view so let's zoom in all right so that is just a little bit so that is 27 power that is at 455 yards. And as you can see, there's just a lot of good detail. You can really get a nice image on this. I definitely think that it, it, it stays pretty bright all the way through that zoom range with the prism and the 56 millimeter objective. So that's, that's kind of scenario one. I wanted to show you the detail you can see at a kind of a shorter range with this scope. Now I just ranged those back trees. I got a range of 996 on one of those back there that you can see before it drops off. So let's look to see how that is. So this is 12 power. And those trees in the back, that's gonna be roughly a thousand yards. So as we zoom in, You can see quite a bit of detail on those. So I was ranging the trees up on the horizon, getting about a thousand. That is just on my phone, one power. And one one kind of tip here is when I'm digiscoping, I typically don't go over like 1.4 on the phone. And so let me show you what that looks like. That's 1.4 on my phone. So there is, those trees are at a thousand at least and you're getting a nice image all the way through with this spotting scope on on 27 power so that's uh scenario number two okay so here's another scenario so this this tree is at 1094 yards from where i'm standing and i wanted to, to show you what that looks like so basically this is on 12 range and it's a very wide field of view. So the guy that is hunting and needs the glass maybe under a mile, this is a great way to, to cover a lot of ground. And you can, can really see pretty good detail all the way there. You could definitely tell if there was an animal running by, but let's zoom in here. A little windy so sorry it's shaky 
So that is on 27 power and that tree's at 1,094 yards. So you can really see a lot of detail. I really, really appreciate the clarity. Now with my, my adapter, with my phone, there's like the edges are a little bit blurred. It's with, when you're actually looking through it, it, it looks very clean pretty much all the way through. So just keep that in mind. This is just to show you really what the zoom ranges look like, kind of the contrast you're getting with the image, but it is through a phone. My adapter does sometimes cut off the edges based on where I move it, just like that. And so uh, as you kind of work with an adapter, that can really, really change the outer edges of the image. And so not all scopes, binoculars have a great clarity on the outer edges. That's a good way to see how the glass quality is. But this one to my eyes looks really good, even when I'm looking through with my own eye, but just using it through the phone or the, the adapter, it does take away from some of that, that clarity. So here's just kind of a basic low light test. We are 10 minutes after sunset and this is on 12 power. So the exit pupil is, is the highest it can be. And it still has just, you can really see well as I'm looking around, it's getting darker to see things with the naked eye, but definitely still does a great job with gathering light here 10 minutes after sunset. Let's zoom in a little bit. So that is 27 power. You can definitely tell it's getting a little dark, but there's still a really great image. You can see a lot of detail and just, uh, just still do doing very, very well all the way through the magnification range. We're now 15 minutes past sunset and this is the windmill. It was around 450 yards, if I recall. So just a good image there still on 12 power. And then there we are at 27. And then this is back on those trees. I arranged them again. I was getting readings over a thousand back on the horizon. And we are close to 15 minutes past sunset. So it is getting darker. It's getting a little harder to see, but still just, just a good image all the way through the magnification range. So very impressed with those results. We, I just wanted to wait a little bit longer to see how it would be at sunset. And it's it's doing a really good job, again, through the phone with my, my phone scope, but very pleased with the results here. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's a neat little spotter. It's not gonna give you the, the, best, the best light transmission because of the objective. It's not gonna give you the, the biggest magnification range. That's not what it's really made for, but I think based on how they built it, the, the zoom range, the features, I think that it does a great job all the way through the zoom range. And I think that for an 11 inch long spotter, that it's, it's, a, it's gonna be a pleasure to carry. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Such good eye relief, it's easy to, to look through. And so I, I really like it. It's, it's a really unique spotter. I don't think it can replace a big spotter, if that's what you prefer using. I just think it has a very kind of a niche use for it and wanted to, to highlight this. So thanks again for, for watching guys. Keep an eye out for, for more videos. I definitely like putting out optics reviews, but if there's anything that you wanna see, let us know. We, we love to, to hear from you guys and uh, just really enjoy making videos and really wanna thank you all for the support just for taking the time to watch this. It's, it's just something that we're passionate about and we would love to chat with you further in the comments or email us from our description. We'd love to just connect and get to know more of you guys. So thanks again and uh, we'll see you soon.